In case you haven't noticed, the federal election is on. Billboards are plastered with party slogans, campaign ads are all around us, and our social media feeds are flaring up with political spin. And you've no doubt noticed the brightly coloured flies arriving in your mailbox every other day. Political advertising is a major feature of Australian election campaigns. But sometimes it can be difficult to separate facts from scare campaigns or even to distinguish a government ad from a party ad. I'm Kat Clay, Head of Digital Communications, and here to talk about political advertising are Deputy Program Director Kate Griffiths and Associate Annika Stobart from Grattan's Budget and Government Team. Welcome, Kate. Welcome, Annika. Hi, Kat. Hi, Kat. Firstly, Annika, what is political advertising and are there any restrictions on it? Political advertising is essentially advertising that seeks to promote a political party, candidate or political agenda. And these ads can be made by anyone. They tend to come from political parties uh, in particular to influence voters. So essentially the rules that are, exist around this are largely regulated by the Australian Electoral Commission, but there are very few rules that they impose. So what they require is for, um, firstly, ads to be authorised, so that's whoever's funding the political ad puts their name to it. And the second requirement is that uh, they the ads don't mislead on the election process. So, for example, uh, how to fill out a ballot paper. But apart from this and a few other small uh, restrictions, there are really there's really no regulation on the content of an ad. So there is no fact checker whatsoever. So, Annika, as you said, there's no fact checker for political ads. Does this mean political ads can contain lies? Yes, they can. Uh, the truth or otherwise of what is said in a political ad is essentially then left up to the voter to determine for themselves. It's worth noting that this is actually quite different to how we have it in the commercial sector, where if a company advertises their product or service, they actually cannot, under law, mislead or deceive consumers about that product or service. You know, and if it if it does, you know, the matter is investigated, the the ad is pulled, and the company can face fines or penalties. But in the political realm for political ads, uh, this is not the case, and there are no consequences for political parties if they lie to voters in their ads. And I mean, we see in other industries, there are quite severe penalties and severe restrictions on what can and can't be advertised. I think of medical and food advertising in Australia. We can't make false claims and there's a lot of regulation around that. Kate, why in the political sphere is this allowed? Surely there should be rules or there are rules that prevent misleading or deception in political advertising as well. Yeah, wouldn't it be nice if we could have a truthful campaign? Um, look, deliberately false and misleading advertising does hurt the democratic process by diverting voter attention from the real issues and potentially distorting election outcomes. But there are several reasons why truth is tricky to regulate in a political context, which goes to your question. So first, campaigns are often rightly focused on the future, which means that parties are making claims about what they would do in office, making promises, signalling values and making claims sometimes about what the other side would do too. And, of course, no one can predict or fact-check the future. Uh, it's really up to voters, as Annika said. Um, it's really up to voters whether political parties have credibility in their promises and claims about the future. That's not to say that nothing can be fact-checked. There's certainly claims about past and present policies that could be fact-checked. That's where the second and third complications come in. So how do we ensure that such a process doesn't dampen the contest of ideas that elections ought to be about? How do we ensure that well-intended laws don't end up being weaponised by political opponents? Essentially, we don't want election campaigns that just get tied up in the courts. These are the reasons why it's tricky to regulate. But having said that, South Australia and the ACT have enacted truth in political advertising laws at state level, so it can be done. And in the South Australian context, for example, the electoral commissioner can request that an ad is withdrawn if it's materially inaccurate. Someone has to go through the process of determining what's materially inaccurate, uh, which could be burdensome, uh, but that's usually the end of it at that point. The ad gets withdrawn. 
I guess as a follow-up to that, I mean, my concern there would be the timeliness of it. I mean, if you made a complaint about an ad during electoral campaign and potentially it got reviewed after the election was done, I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, calling into account those advertisements. Absolutely. Yeah. So timeliness is critical in an election campaign. And really, that's why um, legislation in this space can end up tying up campaigns in the courts, uh, tying up advertising in the courts. And, and you wouldn't you wouldn't want that to be the result of truth in advertising laws. But, you know, I think the fact that we've got some examples at state level is, is promising that we can um, do something around this, but it's certainly not, not ideal. And I think at the end of the day, the way we regulate essentially is that political parties are, themselves have to put their name to their ad, as Annika said, and so it becomes up to the voter whether um, they can trust what that candidate or party or third party has put forward in a campaign. Which brings me to an interesting question for you, Annika, and, and it's about those third parties because I want to ask you about political endorsements by third parties. I saw the advertisement with the CEO of Guide Dogs Victoria endorsing Josh Frydenberg. Can people and organisations publicly support whoever they like? Yes, essentially. So the Australian Electoral Commission does not prevent anyone from promoting or endorsing a political party. That's not a contravention of their rules. But there are other rules uh, out there, so particularly for charities. If you're a registered charities, then uh, what you can and can't do falls under the Charities Act, and the Charities Act prohibits registered charities from having an actually stated purpose of promoting or opposing a political party or candidate so because of this, uh, it's uh, not encouraged for charities, registered charities, to endorse candidates or parties because they then risk their charity status. Kate, back to you. What about restrictions on the amount of advertising? I keep seeing political ads everywhere I look. So there are no limits on how much political parties and independent candidates can raise or spend in a federal election. The race is absolutely on to raise as much money as you can, more than your opponents ideally, so that you can spread your message further and wider than they can. We can sort of look at examples from previous elections to kind of get a sense of how much might be being spent at the moment. Um, so with no limits, uh, we, we are talking about um, potentially around the half a billion dollar mark in terms of um, campaign expenditure because in the 2019 federal election, parties collectively um, or in the year of the 2019 federal election, parties collectively spent $433 million, which is a pretty enormous amount. And typically it becomes a benchmark for what gets spent in the next election. We do know that back in 2019, um, that year, there was New South Wales and Victorian state elections as well. So perhaps not all of it was spent on the federal campaign, but we did have some pretty big spenders in, in the two major parties and in Clive Palmer's United Australia Party at that election, who are all back again in 2022. And we've seen the advertising uh, that's come out already. And certainly there's strong signs that this is going to be another big spending campaign. The election's sort of spending and particularly who's donating to fund that spending, to fund that advertising, we won't know for sure who's involved until next February, uh, which is when the donations data gets released. Um, and I think that that's one of the real flaws in, in this process is that voters don't have that information when they go to the polls about who's backing their, the different political parties and candidates. But um, essentially, even then, when we do get that information next February, we still won't be fully confident who the major donors are in our um, political system because of some of the loopholes in the federal donations disclosure laws. So there's some real problems in how advertising um, and funding for parties is, is regulated. One of the things I think that would really help here and really the best way to reduce the influence of money in politics is to make donations themselves less valuable. And you can do that by limiting how much political parties spend during election campaigns. So they're allowed a specific budget to communicate their message, but there's no incentive to raise money beyond that because they can't spend it anyway. And that would reduce the influence of major donors and free up politicians to do the important job of representing their communities. Um, and we know that rules like these, caps on spending, already exist in New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia and the ACT. We know that they work. We know that they can be implemented. And most OECD countries have spending limits for political parties and or candidates. So Australia is a real, at the federal level, is a real outlier on this. Has there been any studies done which kind of correlate the influence of political advertising on election outcomes? Is that something you've looked into or is that um, something that's yet to be studied? 
look, what we can say in the Australian context is that four out of the last five elections have been won by the party that had the bigger war chest, so more income and more spending. That's mostly going to advertising, but not necessarily entirely. Um, and we don't know if particular how particular ads have influenced particular voters, et cetera, but we can see that um, money matters. The other complication with this is that the possibility that money flows to the party more likely to win, so that the, the causality here is, is ambiguous, whether the bigger spending party wins the election because of money is probably um, an overstatement because it's also possible that the, the party that can raise more funds raises it because people are expecting them to be the next government. So there's an ambiguity there, but I think 2019 makes quite a nice example because we know that um, in 2019, the party that was expected uh, to win power, Labor, did not. They were outraised and outspent by the coalition. So in that case, at least, the higher spending party, but not the party that was expected to win, uh, did in fact win. And we know that money certainly makes a big difference to your ability to get your message out there. So I think, yeah, money's certainly a big factor in elections. So my final question is about government advertising, Annika. I recall in the lead up to the election, the federal government is having a number of ads spooking their performance on the economy. Is this political advertising? It's interesting. So there's government advertising and political advertising. And what we mean by government advertising is it's taxpayer funded. So uh, government needs to communicate with the public about said matters, for example, getting a booster shots. This is uh categorised under government advertising, but what we tend to see sometimes is this kind of taxpayer advertising shading into political advertising. So when, as you said, the government is spruiking their own performance. So we saw last year uh, there were ads where the government was uh, promoting how it had bought extra vaccines, or more recently we've seen government ads about Australia's economic performance, and it's not exactly clear what the public benefit is from these kinds of ads. So the rules are different for government advertising, as you'd expect, because we're talking about taxpayer money. And there are some rules in place uh, that try and ensure that these kinds of ads aren't politicised. But these rules are fairly weak. They uh, firstly require that campaigns be justified, objective, fair, and prohibit promotion of political party interests. While these might sound good, there's actually no mechanism to, to really uh, enforce them. There is a review committee, uh, but they only look at proposed campaigns and they also can't veto ads if they break any of those rules. So we do see, as a consequence of these weaker processes, some politicisation of government ads. And in particular, we've seen in past elections that more spending occurs in the lead up to elections, which also suggests some politicisation. Yes, yeah, so I've heard about the caretaker period for pu the public service, which does impact government advertising. Could you tell us a little bit about that and the kind of regulation around that? So the caretaker period, for those who don't know, is kind of what occurs uh, when an election is called. The government goes into what is called caretaker mode, where the uh, government shouldn't make any major decisions and these different conventions come into place to have a lay level playing field for the election campaign between all the different parties. And so under those caretaker conventions, uh, government advertising is meant to stop any campaign that would continue, would needs uh, approval from the opposition to go ahead. You might have some ads for recruitment for government positions continuing, but otherwise other ads should stop. So during an election campaign, you shouldn't see taxpayer funded advertising. Uh, we should primarily be seeing political advertising. Thank you so much, Kate and Annika, for talking to me about political advertising. It's such an interesting topic to discuss right now as we head into the federal election. If you'd like to read more, you can also read their op-ed on political advertising, which is available on our website at grattan.edu.au, and we'll post a link to that in our show notes as well. Grattan is a not-for-profit organisation, and all our research is available for free on our website. If you enjoy our podcast or our research throughout the year, please consider becoming a regular donor at grattan.edu.au forward slash donate. If you want to join the conversation with us, please find us on Twitter at Grattan Inst and all other social media at Grattan Institute. And as always, please take care and thanks so much for listening.